Hi, everybody, and welcome to another segment of AstrologyAnswers.com's Weekly Forecast. My name is Terrence Gardino. The week begins on Monday, April the 5th. And next Sunday is a new moon in fiery Aries, aligning with loving, creative Venus. So we really look forwards for this next cycle. But I'm bringing it up, which I mention every month, is the week prior to the next new moon is when the energy is wrapping up, it's winding down, or you're just in a holding pattern. It is next week after the new moon next Sunday that the energy is opening up. You know, it's gearing up, it's pumping up, but this is the week it's winding down. So overall, this is not the best week to be launching a major project. Now, it's not necessarily the kiss of death because you have to look at other aspects going on in your own individual horoscope. But even if it's okay to start a major new project, because it's prior to the new moon, it may take longer for you to manifest your goals. But let's start with Monday. The moon has been over the weekend in Capricorn, practical, conventional, hardworking Capricorn, but it's going to be void of course, which means the moon is no longer making any aspects to other planets. So the energy is flat or the energy is unproductive until 6.04 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, at which point the moon moves into futuristic, unconventional, quirky Aquarius. Aquarius is a sign of groups and organizations and friendships. It can stimulate more social interaction. By late morning, early afternoon, Pacific time, the moon in Aquarius will be in harmony with communication discerning Mercury. This is a really favorable uh, time for um, brainstorming new ideas, thinking out of the box, um, um, writing, speaking, all of these kinds of, of expression will be more positive. On Tuesday, as the moon continues in Aquarius, it will be in harmony with Ari, the Aries sun. Aries is a fire sign. Aquarius is an air sign. Air is the fuel to heat up the fire. The fire is the heat to expand the air. So this is why air signs and fire signs are compatible. So it's a, it's a compatible day overall for everybody. And Venus, pleasure seeking Venus, Venus sociable, charming Venus will be in harmony with assertive Mars. Venus in harmony with Mars can awaken passion very favorable for awakening romance, for becoming infatuated. Venus is also the planet of, of um, creativity. So there could be a lot of creative activity, a lot of creative passion. Wednesday, the moon will still in Aquarius, but it now will be retrograde. I mean, sorry, will be void, of course, from 3.05 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. So that's quite a long time um, until it goes into Pisces at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So during that moon void, of course, the first part of the day, remember, the energy is flat. It's more unproductive. And we're getting really close to the darkest phase of the moon before it begins the new moon on Sunday. So Wednesday is really especially a time up to 1.30 p.m. Pacific time to 
not make any important decisions. Good for reflection. Um, good for, you know, relooking and checking everything and making sure all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted. At when the moon goes into Pisces, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, the public tone of Pisces is more personal, sensitive, emotional. When the moon had been in Aquarius the couple of days before, Aquarius is more mental, more, um, more in your head. As the moon enters into Pisces for the general public, we're more subjective rather than Aquarius is more objective. But by Thursday, the moon in sensitive Pisces will be in harmony with um, quirky, futuristic Uranus from 7 to 9 a.m. approximately at its strongest point, Pacific time. This is really favorable for engaging with group activities, um, also getting yourself out of any kind of store, a stuck or boring routine really shakes, uh, shakes one up emotionally for some new life, some new energies. Friday, as we're now in the dark phase of the moon, because the moon's in Pisces and the next sign is Aries and Aries is the new moon. So this is the darkest phase of the moon. And on Friday, Mars, assertive Mars, will be in a challenging square aspect to unfocused nebulous Neptune. Especially with the moon in the dark phase, this Mars-Neptune can be a day of discouragement because whatever you're trying to assert and take action, that's the Mars. You're going to feel like you're getting lost in quicksand, that you are feeling undermined. Sometimes you have to be careful of being cheated, lied to, or scammed with the Mars in a difficult angle to Neptune, and especially with this dark phase. As we go into Saturday, the moon is now in Aries. And the next day, Sunday, it's going to be the new moon, but we've entered the ballpark. The dark phase is ending and Aries is all this. Pisces is more internal and reflective. Now the new moon and the moon on Saturday going into Aries. Aries is enthusiastic. It's energetic. It's like action. Let's play sports. Let's be more physical. And discerning Mercury is going to be in harmony with business pragmatic Saturn. A good day to begin business negotiations or starting to set up, uh, you know, the system and structures for a business. Great for learning new job skills. Also, Venus, pleasure seeking, sociable Venus will be in harmony with expansive Jupiter. And so for Saturday night, you know, for most people around the world, the evening for celebrating, for enjoying yourself, for uh, enjoying your loved ones. This Venus Jupiter can be a very favorable Saturday night for entertainment, for parties, for, um, for romance. And, um, just remember social distancing but you can have a really good time. And the Mercury Saturn, which is good for business, will also keep you very grounded, giving you a lot of common sense. So on Sunday, the new moon officially starts in Aries, starting to focus our attention to a new area of the chart, which is wherever Aries falls in your chart. This new moon is going to be very much influenced by love planet Venus. And the Venus is influenced by passionate, compulsive Pluto. 
So people who fall in love um, with the new moon, especially over those next two weeks, they could be feeling really like they've met the one, they've met their soulmate, or at least the attraction could be really compulsive. If you're in a relationship, this could be quite favorable for falling in love again or bringing more romance or going on a pleasurable vacation or attending, you know, a party and just starting to feel alive and romantic again. So before I sign off, I want to remind you I'm available for a one question offer for a nominal fee to request it. Just go to astrologyanswers.com. At the top of the page, you'll see a tab that says advisors. Click on it. Scroll down until you find me. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you next week with my next segment. Until then, be safe and well.